Welcome back everyone. My name is Trap. Tonight I'm going to go over how to lazy load the Primagen's plugin called Harpoon. Normally when we see this plugin being used, it gets set up with the uh, after plugin directory in Vim or NeoVim. There's nothing wrong with that, but tonight I thought I'd experiment with this particular plugin, see if I can't get it to be lazy loaded when I use um, lazy Vim. So first of all, let's take a Take, take a look at a couple items uh, on this particular plugin. So we're just going to launch our browser really quick. And we're going to see that to use this particular plugin, there's not a lot that we have to do. So if you're using Plug or Packer, it's pretty easy to install it. We're going to see me using uh, Plug uh, uh, LazyVim to, to load. So it'll be a little bit different. One of the keys is we want to do minimal configuration to just get it running. And so to do that, you see that we must run the setup command. Okay, so that's about it. We load the plugin, run the setup, and that's pretty straightforward. So as I mentioned, we can use this plugin in the after directory. So if we look at the init Lua, which is a starter kit that the Primagen's put together, I also have forked this particular repo. And the only thing I added to it was the ability to bootstrap it. That's not included in this directory. No issue with that. So if we take a look at Harpoon itself in the configuration, we're going to see there's not a lot here, which is what we would expect. It's minimalistic. Uh, we have a user interface. We can mark a file. Every time you mark a file, it's associated with your Git repository that you're using Harpoon in. The benefit of that is for each Git repository that you're using, you can have multiple files marked. And so when you're in that particular repository, your key bindings are relative to that particular repository, which is kind of cool. So we're seeing here that we're using the, uh, we have a UI menu, we have an add capability, and we have files one through four. So that's really all we want to see is now we're going to transition and see how we can go about doing some lazy loading with this particular plugin. So I'm using my um, normal Tmux setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center up the screen here, and then we're going to go over to another Tmux uh, pane that I have set up so we can run some NeoVim commands directly in another window. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to hop right into NeoVim and we're going to go into, into the lazy configuration and we'll look for Harpoon. And um, we're going to see that Harpoon is in the list, is in the section of not loaded plugins, which is what we'd expect right now. Now also notice that I when I load this particular plugin, I'm doing it on key events. So that's going to be Alt 1 through 8 will cause the plugin to get loaded. So what I'm going to do right now is just do my Alt, uh, Alt 7 command to bring up the menu. So these are the four files that we're going to walk through rather quickly. So the first file is how I go about customizing. So if you've seen any of the Primagen's videos, you know that in this particular buffer, we can use our JNRK key to navigate up and down then you can press your return key to select that particular buffer. So I want to go into my customized buffer first, and we're going to take a look at one item in here. We're going to take a look at disabling a plugin and enabling the plugin. So we're going to take a look at Harpoon itself. And what we'll do is we notice that on line 33, I have the name of the plugin. This is just a simple Lua table. And I have a couple attributes on it. One is called enable and one is called defaults. So if I want to use the defaults, I set that to true. If I want to enable this plugin, then this plugin, I set that to true. Otherwise, it's false. That gives me that ability to, to load or not load the Harpoon plugin and have lazy controlling that for me. So let's now take a look at that uh, menu again. So we'll go back to that uh, Alt 7. And we will take a look at a quick function that I want that you'll see me using here in a minute which in this, in this particular uh, file, we're going to see some Boolean helpers. And you're going to notice on line 19 and on line um, number 15, you're going to see that I've got this uh, internal handlers. Well, hopefully, we're not going to see any error messages tonight. But what we will see is I'm going to check the status of that plugin. So I am going to be looking to determine whether or not uh, Harpoon has been enabled. And so this is done on, this is an internal function is enabled with an underscore preface. And then I've got the table, the function in the, in the table itself, uh, the M table. And I do an XP call on that to check the status and also check the enabled bit. And I'm going to return the status and enabled um, on when this function completes. So we'll also use one other function uh, down the 17 lines. And we're going to take a look at use the plugin defaults, true or false. 
So now let's go take a quick look to see how I go about enabling uh, the plugin itself. And so we'll go back to that uh, UI menu and we'll go ahead and take a look at the Harpoon configuration. So in what you're seeing on the first couple lines of code here is that we are, I'm getting from my configuration uh, file, I'm getting a function that a, a table that allows me to do is enabled and use defaults. It just allows me to minimize some of the key, key keystrokes that I'm having to type later on when I'm actually writing code. So if we take a look at line seven, I'm localizing a, a variable called plugin and it's no surprise, the value, the string value of that is harpoon. So if we took a look at what we're gonna do from a lazy standpoint, this begins the definition of the lazy specification. So on line 12, you can see that the prime engine is the name of the GitHub repository dot dot plugin. So there's that concatenation occurring that gives me the fully qualified name for the plugin. On line 13, I'm enabling the lazy specification if plugin, in this case Harpoon, is enabled in that table that we looked at just a moment ago, then it will set the enabled flag or the enabled event or property in that particular for that particular specification. So on line 16 and, and on, we're actually doing key bindings, and the key bindings I'm using is Alt-1 through Alt-8. The reason I do that is I use the Apple low-profile keyboard, and so on my right hand, I can use the Alt key, and on my left hand, I can do 1 through 8 really quick to navigate. And you're going to see me navigating here in just a minute. So if we go down just a little bit further, in the, fu in the function for ops, what I'm doing is I'm determining whether or not I want to use the defaults. If I want to use the defaults, then I simply return the, all, uh, the ops on 34. If I want to do configuration, then I set that flag to false. And so I'm not using the defaults. And in this case, I'm going to modify some of the flags for my particular liking. What I'm experimenting right now with is this exclu excluded file types. So for example, you notice git commit out there. It doesn't make any sense to me to add that particular file type to my list of files that, that Harpoon would allow me to navigate to. So I've disabled that. Again, that's just an experiment that I'm kind of playing with. Next, if we take a look at the config, we're going to see I'm not really doing anything fancy here since I'm setting up my key bindings 1 through 4, which gives me that alt key uh, for, for navving to, nav to file 1, 2, 3, 4. Previous and next is 5 and 6 in my case, and 7 and 8 is to bring up the UI or to add a new model to add a new mark. So you notice on line 51, I'm using that concatenation. So that plugin is that variable at the top of the file that we saw up here. So this is how I'm going about simplifying my code. So what I'm finding is I, as I configure these plugins, I have a lot of code that looks very boilerplate, specifically when I start to look at things like the ops and a function. That chunk of code that's on line 32 and line 35 tends to repeat itself quite a bit. Then what happens between the else and the end statement of loading the ops, that's where I have variability in my plugins. And the same holds true in the configuration section. If I need that plugin name, then I can use that plugin to requirement to do the setup with the ops, then I can do the key bindings. Normally I do my key bindings in a single file. I have uh, So one of my files that I have loaded here as you notice, my key maps, I've chosen for this particular setup to not put Harpoon in, in my key maps file. I will probably go back later and actually move those key bindings into that file. I just particularly like to have all my key bindings in one place so I can make it's easier for me to find if I've got conflicts when I'm doing that. So now that we have the Harpoon menu up, let's take a look at a couple things really quick. So we'll bring that menu back up, but remember I can do previous and next. So I'm going to do uh, Alt 5 and 6. I'm doing previous and next right now. You can see that's really fast. If I do Alt 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm moving through those buffers. So if I do it with the right hand, and, and now I, I'm, hold, I'm literally holding down the right Alt key on my keyboard, and I'm just holding it down, pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, six, seven. So I'm going back and forth as, through these buffers, moving around as fast as I want. So you can see Harpoon does a really nice job moving between buffers for me. I, I like that. So I thought it was kind of fun to play with. I just wanted to lazy load it to see if I could do it. So now let's take a look at, we'll go back to the customization flag. So we can tell that Harpoon is loaded, but let's go ahead and 
tell it to disable it, we're going to change that to false. So we're going to change it to false, right to file, go right back into NeoVim, go right back into the setup, and we notice that we can actually clean Harpoon because LazyVim is determined I don't need it. So if I do that X, it's just removed it, I get out all the way, and I go right back into Lazy, go back into NeoVim, go right back into my settings, and if we look for Harpoon at this point, we're going to find that it's in the disabled list, which is exactly what we would expect. But because of the way Lazy works, I can cause that to be loaded by getting out of this file, going right back in, and going to that config file. Now, in this particular case, because I don't have Harpoon loaded, I can't do that quick navigation using Harpoon. But what I can do is navigation with either Telescope or one of my other modifications that I've shown you is I modify uh, the to do plugin. So I'm going to do I'm going to do find YouTube. So, so my find YouTube brings up and finds all the files in this particular repository that has the YouTube marker. So there's that customized file that we want to go right back to. So we're going to hop in here. We'll go over a couple words and we'll just do a true. We'll insert uh, true here and we will get out of the file and go right back into NeoVim, and you notice it's reinstalling Harpoon. It's exactly what you would expect, okay? So as soon as this finishes, we're done with lazy configuring things, so we should be able to do that Alt-7 and bada-boom, bada-bing, I've got Harpoon back and running again. So what I've just done is I've been able to enable and disable Harpoon very easily with LazyVim, I'm finding this is a really cool workflow. It's, it's a lot of fun to play with plugins like this. Hey, my name is Trap. I hope this gives you some ideas on how you can find plugins and load them, play with Lazy Vim and, 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 and lazily load that plugin with not a lot of effort. Use the default or use the configuration, whatever makes you happy, whatever improves your workflow. Again, my name is Trap. Have a great day and may God bless you.